Hello and welcome back to the ministry and today we're talking about the tithe is coming in. Now we are in a season where we are pretty much seeing the beginning phases of what I have heard referred to as the supernatural wealth transfer. This wealth transfer is referred to in I believe it's Exodus either 13 or 14 when the Lord is talking to Moses and he's telling them that they are going to gather all of the things that Pharaoh's people had in Egypt borrowing vessels borrowing money jewels rules everything and my thing is, is I don't understand how it was referred to as borrowing it when they were taking it with them but as they prepared to leave when Pharaoh told them to go he said take everything and get out it took them a period of time to gather up everything that they had gathered before they left a lot of us are in a season where it's about time for us to receive our bumper crop harvest look up bumper crop harvest a bumper crop harvest is a harvest that is overdue it's a harvest that was from past seeds that were sown delayed so on and so forth I'm about to read to you a passage that came from a broadcast one of the ministers I listened to did back in 2018 when she did this broadcast she was talking about the flooded overflow and in it she discussed this God showed me a door the enemy created underwater and this door is huge and it is thick like a set of vault doors and no matter how you would try to get through that set of doors you couldn't get through the door the enemy thought that by creating this door he could stop you from your blessing but God created a molecular or the, mo the molecules that water is created by he created it because he is the blacksmith that built the doors hear me somebody when God is ready to open the door expect the water to gush out like a flood around that time I had gotten a set of words and I saw this twice I saw a deluge I saw a dam a actual dam that was the size of a football field that an angel walked me through that was humongous like an Olympic Stadium sized dam and I also heard um, overflow oh uh, is it geyser I believe I had a dream of a geyser and I around that same time I was having a lot of dreams of torrential downpours and rain and rain is a reference to blessings you will see a lot of ministers reference rain and blessings together I remember a few years back many of you may recall this because it was a major storm in Miami matter of fact actually my coach that I listened to she was living in Miami at the time well she was close to Miami at the time and because she was close to Miami they moved everybody that was anywhere near that area away from that area so she was she and her family were put up in the hotels um, and there was a, such a situation where the water from this storm was creating um, that what they thought was either going to become a typhoon or tsunami where the water receded such a drastic 
pacing that it was affected in a miraculous way that this water created um, like a what's the word I'm looking for the water was assumed sorry for that the water was assumed to have drawn all the way back and that when that water came back in it was going to come inland so with such a force that it would destroy much of the population in that area but what happened due to God's prayer warriors my church my people her church her her people the people that were praying everybody was praying at that time for that that storm to recede and what happened is the water did not gush in like it was assumed to do it slowly came back in as slowly as it went out and it returned back to normal levels but those of us if a person has been sowing you've sowed into your church you've sowed into your own ministry with the right heart you sowed in good cheer because most ministers if you listen and some ministers don't say this they say that when you sow you must show sow good tithes in good cheer you must never sow in duress or feeling that you are under some sort of duress to sow okay and because of that it affects the harvest that comes out of it if you sowed in duress meaning if you were coerced manipulated or you felt desperate for it anything to happen you must sow in good cheer bring me all the ties to the storehouse for there shall be meat in mine house prove me not that herewith that I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall have room enough to receive press down shaking together and running over shall man shall the same be measured unto you with faith it shall be measured out the tithe is coming in so if you sowed in this wilderness season those of us we have had the ability to sow in our season of wilderness a lot of people discredit the fact that you may be in a wilderness season and you don't have any money it doesn't mean money it means sowing sowing is a mental emotional physical spiritual social and financial thing so because of this if you showed in any of these other areas you're still going to receive a harvest meaning if you sowed a good word into a friend of yours, if you sowed, just like I'm sowing right now, as you are listening to this word, I am sowing into you. If you sowed uh, by writing up blog posts to encourage people, if you sowed by giving food to people, if you sowed by cooking for people, if you sowed uh, by giving away physical items um, or clothing or um, just giving other things. If you sold by socially give, giving, meaning you gave a party, you gave a gathering, you, you did something for somebody else in a servant's manner. If you sold by um, encouraging someone emotionally, if you coach somebody through an experience, everything that you did in your season of wilderness to help someone else, that's sowing. It's not just financial. And I've sowed financial seeds too. But in this season, I didn't sow much financial seeds. I sowed by talking, encouraging, um, feeding people uh, by doing my blog posts, doing my public posts, doing my uh, the things that I do on social media. Um, I sold by 
also giving financially until I no longer had anything to give and now I am waiting on my bumper crop harvest. Sewing by giving into homeless people. So, sewing clothing, food, money to homeless, sewing to churches. You sowed. When you sow, you shall reap. A lot of our seeds, I've seen this happen multiple times and in multiple seasons before, where it see, almost seems like you're on one side of a brick wall that you cannot see the other side. See this wonderful brick wall? Think about that as your, your, your wall. That's the wall. <laughs> you're on the side of a wall. And you can't see through that wall, can you? But all the things you are doing are adding up. I even got prophesied to. It's like the things that you have done, the Lord is storing them up. Meaning he's storing them up. And once the wall is moved, then they will come forward. Now, there's two different idolizations or thought processes. There is a delay where you are being held up from the blessing in which is meant to come gushing forth in your life where the enemy is holding you up or there is a holding pattern where God himself is holding everything in place till his kairos timing and that thing will flood into your life at the appropriate time when each person is in proper position to receive and to do their part it's like a relay race at in certain seasons you're there's a person that's supposed to pass the baton to you you're supposed to pass the baton to somebody else and there's a series of people that are all going to get have batons that they got to pass or connect each person when one person takes the other side of the baton that's a connection for you so there are people that are supposed to be a part of each individual season when those people aren't into place guess what you get stuck in a holding pattern because God's got to deal with the other person or the other set of people in order to position them for them to be able to get each phase of the process done each person has their own part of the phase of each process that needs to be done and completed at a specific point in time. Now, God will particularly add in a delay because he knows that the enemy is going to try something. But in a lot of cases, we be thinking that the enemy is trying to try something with us, but God timed that delay in there. He knew it was going to happen because if you ever notice, the Lord will tell you that you're under a delay. He'll tell you that you're being held up. He'll tell you somebody's trying to hold you up. And you have to pray into it, pray against it, pray things to come into order to his, his divine order. And with these things, you will see a shift. But you also see stuff when the enemy is trying to delay you. And God will allow these delays in order to usher you in at an appropriate time for these things to happen. So you also use the enemy to destroy and demolish certain things that will um, be delays for you getting to where you got to go. Um, with that being said... Eyes have not seen nor ear heard of all of the kinds of blessings that are about to come into our households. Ephesians 3 and 20. God bless us abundantly, then we can ask, then we can ask for or think. Proverbs 13 and 22. Let all inspiring prosperity hit our bloodlines. I claim a supernatural wealth in Jesus' name. If you have sold and have noticed in the midst, maybe it was in March, whatever your season was that you experienced a drying up, mine dried up, started drying up between September of last year and the end of last year. I got a few breaks and a few sustaining amounts of money, but it was pretty dry. 
your finances, your living situation, something's going on. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Now, I will say this. Be aware that you may need to also do a check with self, a self-check-in. Have you done anything, meaning did you sow into the wrong ministry? Did you sow into people that were siphoning money away from you? Were you sowing into people that you know could be speaking word curses over your finances? Do you know somebody that could be doing something that you may have sold into them and they actually are doing witchcraft against against you? Did somebody in your family do witchcraft unknowingly? Did somebody in your family offer you up or offer the family members up in witchcraft? Check. Spiritually check. Do a fast. Do whatever you got to do to make sure that these things are not the things and or reasons that are blocking your blessings from coming in. But if all things are in accordance, you've dealt with all those things as well, make sure to check on the spirit of Leviathan, the spirit of Python, the siphoning spirit, the spirit of destruction, and um, look into the palm worm, canker worm, cutting worm, and locust in relation to your finances. Make sure you got all those things out the way. Once you make sure that all, all those things are out of the way, and you've prayed into it, you've got neither confirmation or understanding that no, that's not the reason why you are, are being delayed right now. You're in a holding pattern. Once you know this, then you have to come into the understanding, okay, something might be holding, you might be in a, ho a, a hold. God might be holding it up because it's a timing situation which he's waiting on the Kairos time. Look up Kairos time. There's Kairos time, Kronos time, and recently I heard of another time frame, which I can't think of off, off the top of my time, off of my head, but it's about timing. It's like God's timing for these things to come to pass. And it's frustrating. Oh my God, it's so frustrating when you are waiting for God's timing because God doesn't tell you what time that is. And he's like, yeah, I'm not telling you when, but... I'm just going to say wait. You know how many times I've heard wait in my spirit and I'm like, but you will hear what God say wait so many times to you <laughs> that you will get so frustrated. Love you, Jesus. You are my Lord and Savior. But it, it can get annoying <laughs> when he starts saying wait to you and you're like, really? It's like people are telling you, this is the season, this is the time, this is the, this is the, this is it. You're like, God, and you're like, wait, oh man. <laughs> and then you're getting words, and you're getting confirmation of those words. Confirmation, ever confirmation, for have confirmation. And you're like, oh, and he's like, wait. <sighs> and you feel like a woman that is pregnant, and you're at the point of delivery, and you're like, I can't push yet. He's like, no, you can push, but you can't, you're not going to get there just yet. You're going to be pushing for a minute. And you're like, ugh. That's what it feel like. Money has receded. The clothing, the way you're living has dried up. Your resources have dried up. Listen to me and listen well. When you are dried up, get ready. Because everything that has dried up is about to spring forward. Spring. We are coming to the end of spring. We're actually in the beginnings of summer. Dig ditches. I'm going to give you some knowledge. I need you to pay very close attention to this. Summertime is a time that you will see certain things come up spring is springtime spring mo is referred to mostly as a season where things spring up summer is a time in this season some people are going to be experiencing delays in their finances 
other people are going to be experiencing a deluge and a overflow make sure you know which which set of person you are fall represents a falling falling away of people falling away of situations falling away. this is usually when you see the most disaster and that's when you nine times out of ten will begin to see people go into isolation through the fall and the winter as things fall apart and then you have to regroup over the winter time while trying to figure those things out and then springtime yet again uh, you're harvesting what you planted in the fall and then you also have to look at one your um holy days your holy feast days you have to look at your um because there's a set of holy feast days that happens around easter time during the spring and then there's a whole set of feast days that happens in the fall you see like the lunar calendar you see all of those kinds of things with the um what do you call it the the the, the 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 different moon cycles the moon cycles were created by god but in certain cases you will be able to register and this is for witchcraft specifically when you see certain witchcraft cycles especially with moon cycles when the moon is in full fledged height there's more witchcraft going on you got to pray harder and you got to fast when you see blood moons, when you see certain moons, and there is actually a secondary Pentecost moon that um, happens in May that you have to be aware of that you can do. Uh, this year it happened May 16th, I believe it was, which um, it's a makeup for the Pentecost, and you fast on that day. There's also... Um, It's something in relation to a day that was celebrated in the book of Esther. I can't think of the name of it right now, but there's multiple different celebrations. And these all all these things position you for certain things. And they're biblical because they're in the Bible. They are in the Bible. And there are certain celebrations. Not everybody celebrates these celebrations, but there are a lot of Christians that do celebrate certain calendar um, you've got the Hebraic calendars and so on and so forth. Now, should you be aware of these lunar cycles? Yes, because of the fact that you will be privy, and I don't want to go into spiritual warfare, but you'll be privy to um, certain attacks prior to them happening if you position yourself to fast, pray, so on and so forth. But if you are not skilled in this, you are not an intercessor, you, this is not your deal, don't sit up there and try to do it. Because if you don't know how to do it, you actually are putting yourself at a disservice by doing so. So, um, but I said all that is sometimes these very same things lunar calendars and so on and so forth will actually position uh the enemy to come against your money and your finances so you got to be also aware of that um so that you can pray against these things uh creating and sending witchcraft to dry and siphon and destroy your financial blessings during certain seasons but pray into gain understanding and sit with the Lord and find out whether these are the things that are delaying you financially first. Um, but the tithe comes in. All of your seeds will come in an overflow. There will be a spring. When the doors open, the flood will be beyond what you could think or or imagine the overflow the deluge remember i brought up the deluge before the deluge is amazing money will be brought in like bananas it will be businesses it will be new living conditions it will be 
outrageous how these things come you will get new clothes and new gar garments i went through a season um about two years ago in august where i got a a financial release of over twelve thousand dollars and when that happened i was able to get things that i needed from my computer to new clothing to new things just needs that i had not to mention to prepare and to invest into invest so um work on my education do all of these kinds of things i was able to get these things in order and it was like immediately after that i dealt with an attack financially where um one i was shifted to another location and when i was shifted to this other location i was dealing with uh warfare after having gotten it and it's like it's i dealt with a lot of a lot of times when i get financial blessings and certain blessings i've dealt with immediate ramification where the enemy was sent in at this particular time it was a young woman that i dealt with before and i knew she was sent because she was into um santeria she performed santeria i remember one night i came into the bathroom this is no lie i'm not lying this woman i walked in the bathroom there was a cup sitting on the sink and she had some type of juice in it she had burnt somebody's license what thank god it wasn't mine but she burnt somebody's license and another night i came in there and it was literally something on fire in the sink i tell you no lie i'm so glad i got out of that situation i'm so glad certain types of witchcraft and warfare will be sent after you immediately after you receive a, fi a financial blessing now for me i know that i have been in a war and under warfare and thank god somebody was sent to me um recently to tell me why every time i get close to a financial breakthrough i end up having such a uh hard experience afterwards so i now know for what reason and why this occurs and i've been praying trying to go into fasts breaking so on and so forth um but i'm seeing movement it just seems like it's slow coming it feels like you're moving through quicksand and mud. And thank God for um, his word by Lady Jeremia, who was just released at the time that I'm recording this, was released just before, where she talked about this very same thing. Um, I might link it in the description when I post to this. Um, but all of these, you will see a release of the things that you need during the season. And as you are seeing a release of the things that you need, they're going to be, the tithes are all coming in. For the seeds you showed, for what you have pressed in, pressed in for, fasted for, you, all the things that you have done are coming in to you. You have no idea the beauty of what God is about to do. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before the presence of God with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and he is, he hath made us, and now we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter in his gates in thanksgiving his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless in his name for the lord is good and his mercy is everlasting his truth endures all generations get ready god is about to move this is a season where god is preparing to move in the areas in which you need him the most so be prepared for the blessing and i've heard many many people i listen to say this you're going to be able to prepare prepare where you can but wait where you cannot because 
when God does this, he's going to usher you or he's going to send people to you to position you for this thing to happen if you can't do it yourself. And with that being said, be ready because it's going to be more than you think. It's going to be more than you could prepare for and more than you could imagine. Get your mind wrapped around that and it's going to happen suddenly. And when it happens suddenly, you're not going to be prepared. You're not going to be prepared because you're not prepared in the fact that you don't know exactly what's about to come. You know you, what you've prayed for. You know what you stood for. You know what has been promised to you. But you don't know how this is going to fall into place. You don't know what it's going to do for you. But you know that it's coming. And it's going to be sudden, quick, and accelerated. Um, one of the young women I listened to who actually I had a coaching call with Remnant Rising. She is a great minister. She's been saying it's so much closer than you think and it's going to happen suddenly. And a lot of us have been hearing that for so long, it's almost like the boy who cried wolf. Oh, we heard that. We've been hearing that. Oh my God. It's been, uh, how many times we going to hear the same stuff? It's going to happen. And because we are so nonchalant about it, when God does it, then we're going to be surprised. Because it's going to be one of those scenarios. It's like, wait, I wasn't prepared for this. Because I mean that. Because we were sitting up there saying, uh-huh. How many times have I heard this before? No, it's about to happen. I even have to try to encourage myself in the Lord. Because I feel the same way. Tell me y'all don't. But it's about to happen. Be in peace. Because it is about to come to pass. Be ready. This is Taj McCameron for the ministry. Much love, faith, peace, and blessings. Until next time, bye-bye.